if you look at your skill set, what you are competent and enjoy doing, and you look at the materials that you have to work with, and you look at the tools that you have to work with, that's when you're most productive. If you have an abstract thought about a piece of jewelry in your mind that you want to make, and then you set out to buy the materials, and then you have to figure out the equipment, and then you have to learning curve on how to use that stuff, you're not going to be very productive. But if you if you have things, and you look into the mix of your skills, materials, and equipment, that item will be created right there, and it will be spontaneous, creative, inspired genius. Everything else. It's, you know, it's just the wrong way to go about life or anything. Well, for me, having limited resources, my approach is to, on anything I'm doing, and it's not just buildings, it's from, from how I make jewelry to, uh, to how I preserve properties or buildings, I, I look at the property, I look at the needs, and I start way ahead of the game accumulating materials and start figuring out how to get a deal there's a fellow named Marvin that buys uh, scrap building materials in the area. I said, uh, Marvin, I'm going to need 60 sheets of green 14-foot roofing tin to do my cabinets. I said, you know, I can't bite off too much at once, so when you get 20 or 30 sheets, call me. We'll start accumulating. Uh, you know, I prioritize, you know, what's the most important on all these buildings is roofs. As soon as you can get an adequate long-term roof on a building, it's going to last until somebody with more resources can come in and finish it out. Babinaw during prohibition was wide open. It, you could you could get a drink any any time, night or day, on Main Street in Babinaw during prohibition. The cars were lined up in the middle of the street, both sides of the street, all the way down to the dam, about a half mile down. And the the police didn't care. Well, this was just kind of the area that was that was paid off. You know, we had, uh, we, it was just a pretty well organized uh, crime, uh, I should say. Little Chicago, they call it. Were there out of towners as well? It was all out of towners. And, and, you know, we were looking at a time when fishing was huge back then. And when you came to town back during Prohibition, there was shops set up that you could walk in and buy your fish so that you could come here and party. And then pick up your fish and take them home to the wife and brag about all the fish you caught on Staten Island. And, uh, and, you know, I've got pictures of the old ice house that sat right behind us here. And one of the deals at an ice house was you brought your fish there and they filleted them for you. It cost you so much of fish, wrapped them in butcher paper. So whether you caught them or not, you could certainly brag about your trip to Staten Island. So, that's... so the main industry was tourism? The main industry was alcohol. <laughs> probably prostitution and definitely game. It wouldn't be uh, cost efficient to open a business. I don't see a business other than maybe a coffee shop that you could open here that could service the utilities and rent on a building. And I've watched several buildings. We had the, the coolest lumber yard and it would have been, oh my goodness, it could have been anything. Nice main structure that's now a, a youth center. But all the all the lumber sheds around there were cute as they could be. You know, there could have it could have been an architectural salvage, it could have been shops, it could have been anything. And I watched it fall into a state of decay and fall down. And the greenhorns in the process of falling down, that was a restaurant up the street. My goal with getting these properties is more to keep them from decaying, get them stabilized till the point that somebody will move in and want to do something with them. I can end them all. You know, you know who knows who knows what will happen. But, uh, my my hope is for this to be, you know, possibly a little artist community. You are so close to nature here; it's incredible. I mean, if you're lucky, you can see a mountain lion here. You know, often you can see pileated woodpeckers. Uh, you know, that's the closest relative. To, to the ivory bill woodpecker, they look like woody woodpecker. They're bigger than a crow. They're, when you see one, you won't believe it. That's a little slice of heaven. Thank you for watching the Kirsten's Antiques YouTube channel. Check us out at www.kirstensantiques.com or click the big K at the end of the episode. For more episodes like this, check out our recommended videos. Thanks.